All right, good morning, good morning. It's uh, good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. Um, it's good to see everybody here. Man, quite a few. I, I didn't know y'all were here. I, like I said the last time, you know, I, I come up and I sit here and I don't look around. You know, God is, is, is such an amazing God. Uh, he has done so much uh, for us. He has done so much in, in Pam and in my life that it, it would be a shame not to tell. It would be a shame not to share what God has done on how great He is. Um, this morning, uh, our verse is out of Matthew chapter 4, verse 19 is going to be uh, my main focus. Um, but this verse is repeated in, in the other Gospels. When when I when I, uh, Pam and I were, were talking one day and I said okay I said I got it I got it I said I know what my next sermon is going to be over she said what is it I said follow me she said man you're awful arrogant aren't you I said, oh, no not really <laughs> but it's just what God laid on my heart and and before I, I really get into this I, I would like to. Uh, Apologize to the church for not being here last Sunday. Uh, we took an impromptu weekend and, and went and spent time with with uh, our uh, middle middle daughter, what she calls herself, and, and uh, we spent time with her and, and her family and had fun and and uh, I, I learned a few things and, and it, it was it was neat to, to what I got to see. Uh, we went to a. Uh, uh, a powwow up in uh, the Miami area, and if you have never been to a powwow, uh, th- it is something to see. That there is a huge difference between a powwow and a stomp dance. I don't know if you guys ever heard these things, but the the stomp dance is more of a religious ceremony that they do throughout the night, and and it is something that I've never been a part of. I've never had any desire to do those things. Because of the way I was raised, that that those things are done to who they call the Creator, and 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 I, I've had my uncles tell me things that, that you know, yeah, they do pray, but they pray to God. They don't pray to Jesus. They pray to God. They leave Him out of it. But the powwow, the powwow is. A uh, just a gathering of people. It's a gathering of the different tribes to come together and and to just communicate with one another and, and to just fellowship with one another, kind of like we do here. We all come from different walks of life. We all have different jobs. We all have different things that we go throughout the day and the weeks. And they just come and just dance. They come and have fun. They come and and talk and laugh and. And, and just to enjoy each other. And, and yes, they do wear beautiful regalia, beads, feathers, beautiful stuff. But, but they, 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 they do it because it's the way that they were taught. The dances that they do uh, is for a reason. There's a certain song that is played. There's a certain beat to the drum. And there's a t- certain way that they dance. And, and it's just to show respect to our past. As Christians, as Christians, we need to show respect to our past. And that past is the old rugged cross. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That's our past. And after he done that, our sins, when we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, our sins were wiped clean. We can look back and we might see them. We might... Look back and say, oh, man, I remember doing that. Why did I do that? God doesn't see it. He looks back from us and he sees the cross and he sees his son's blood upon our lives. And that's where we need to be. That's what we need to focus on. Before we get started, I'm going to have a word of prayer. Father, we, we thank you for the people that are here today. Father, they're here for a reason. Everyone that is here, Lord, is here because you have placed them here at this time. 
Father, whatever you have for them here, I pray right now you just bring it through me and, and just use me, Father, and thank you for allowing me to be this. And Lord, we pray that you just open our hearts. Father, open our minds to the understanding. And Father, we ask that as we, we try to do things our way, Father, that you just break us from that and listen to you and let your spirit move freely this morning. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When, when Jesus came, when Jesus came, people didn't believe. And, and, and it's, it's kind of funny because they didn't want to believe. They liked doing things their way, kind of like us today. We have our routine. We are set in our patterns. We do things the way we like to do them. And here it says, in verse 18, it says, Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. These guys were doing what they were taught to do. They fished. They fished for a living. They fished for their family to, to sell fish, to feed the people. That's what they done. One day, this man walks by. They didn't know who he was. He walked by and he said, hey, follow me. And they knew at that moment. They knew what they needed to do. They left their nets. They jumped out of the boat and left. Everything that they'd been taught, they dropped it. And they followed Jesus. That's what we need to do as Christians today. Even though we're saved, even though you might be saved, and, and we think that that's enough. Well, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. What about our friends? What about your world? Are those people saved? Do you shine your light in their lives? Do the things that you say, do the things that you do reflect Christ? Are you following him? They gave up everything and left. And it goes on and, and it says there's two other brothers that he told to follow, them, follow me and they left their dad. Hey, pops, see ya. I got better things to do now. I'm following Jesus. We need Christians to be bold we need people to stand firm on the word of God we don't need to go back and forth we don't need to say well it's okay to do because everybody else is doing it it's okay to to, to do this because the world's doing it and we'll you know we fit in with them a little bit and we'll win them over to our side it don't happen it don't happen like that. I, it, it's been, I don't know, six, eight months ago, I, I started listening to podcasts at work. I, I figured out how to do that. So I got me little earbuds, and I put them in, and I put one in so I could hear if somebody tries to talk to me, and I find something to listen to, and, and, and <laughs> we have to watch what we listen to. We have to watch these things because I thought, okay, man, this sounds cool. I was looking for something to, to, to listen to, and, and I thought, true crime. Oh, that's interesting. Then I seen one that said, southern fried true crime. I said, oh, southern fried. I like fried stuff. So I started listening to that, and, and then that went on to a different one and to another one. And, man, the, the more I listened to all the, the, the hate and and the evil that is in this world today. 
man, it, it just started to, because I, I listened to it all day. Uh, I, I figured out how to, I know you guys probably know how to do this, but I didn't, to put just one earbud in and put the other one up and hide it until this one died and put the other one in. You got all day to listen to stuff. And, and, I, and I did that, and, and, and the things that were in my, going through my mind were these things of the way that people acted, the, the way that, that they did things. And it's just evil. And the, thing, the people that they did them to, people that they said that they loved, people that they were married to, their family members, strangers, all these. And, man, I thought, man, this is crazy. Man, I got to listen to more. I got to listen to more. What happened next? And I listened to more and listened to more, and, and then the language started coming in. And, 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 and the, the, the language that I was listening to, man, it was like they was using scent enhancers that I don't like to hear. And so I, I was having a bad day at work one day, and, and, and it, it was just terrible. And, and I, I think I spoke on this the last time, and, and I told Pam, and, and she prayed for me, and and after that, you know, something in my mind, I'm going to say something. God told me, what are you listening to? So, okay, God. So I get my thing, get my phone out, and I find me something to listen to, and, and, and I started listening to, to the old southern gospel, what a lot of people call the, the old man music. And, and man, it, 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 I tell you right then, boy, I just thought, woo, revival coming on. Man, I see it. I see it. I feel it. Man, it just lifted me. My spirits lifted. And, and I got home that evening, and the pimp said, How was your afternoon? I said, Oh, I know you prayed for me, didn't you? She said, Yes, I did. I said, I felt it. I felt it because my mind changed. And I, what I started listening to changed, and, and, and it was just, oh, I, I was standing there putting plants and trees in boxes and singing these songs, and then I had a few tears in my eyes, and I was just praising God. And I just kept doing that and doing that and doing that, and, and then the other day, the other day, Satan says, hey, well, what about that true crime stuff? You know, that stuff's interesting. Yeah, 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 well, I kind of like, Listen to that. I, those are some good stories. So I, okay, I, I turned it back on, and I didn't go 10 minutes. I can't do that. That's not right. That's, that's not what I'm supposed to hear. I'm supposed to hear God say, follow me. And I am supposed to follow him. As Christians... We need to learn to listen to God's still small voice when he says, follow me. When he says, that's not right. When he says, pray for this person. How many times ha have you been doing things, you're busy throughout your day, and, and a name comes to your mind that you haven't thought of in a long time. Or a, 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 a name comes to your mind from a member of our church family. Or our pastor's name. His wife, his family, his kids. What, what do you do when you hear those names? Oh, man, the, man that person was crazy. And they used to do some crazy stuff. Man, they're funny. No. It's God telling you, pray for them. There's something going on in their life. Pray for them. I, I was listening to uh, a podcast, um, oh, what's it, the Left Behind series. And, and I don't know how it came up on, on my phone where I found it, but it was the book of the Left Behind. And, and I thought, well, I'll listen to this. I, I, I've seen the movies. I don't know what's going on. And, and I started listening to that. And it was interesting. If you have never seen the movies, watch them. And, and, and it, it really touched my heart because in, in that story, in that book or whatever they was reading or whatever it was, 
there was things in there that really made me think. Because if, if you know the, the storyline to this, this, this show and, and the books and everything is after the rapture has taken place, after all the, the Christians have, have gone to heaven, after Jesus Christ has came and got the Christians, because people were freaking out and, you know, because the clothes were left and no babies around and things like that. And, and the, but there were still some people who had gone to church who were still there. And, and, and one of the main characters was an assistant pastor. And he said, well, I, I knew what to say. I, I, I went to school. I learned what to say. But I knew it wasn't right. But in, in that, in that storyline, he says, now I know I need to follow Jesus. Something to that effect. And, and as Christians, we need to learn to follow him in every day, every step of our life. And yeah, it's going to be hard. I've I, I seen a thing on, on, on the Facebook where it said that a Christian and a lost person was walking down the road and Satan walks up. And the Christian is standing there boldly and, and the lost person gets behind the Christian and says, oh, I'm scared he's, the devil's going to get me. The Christian turned around and told him, he's not going to get you. He's coming after me. He's already got you. So where do we stand in that? Are we bold enough to stand and say, okay, Satan, come on? Or are we trying to hide because he already has us and we don't know it? As Christians, and, and I'm, I'm myself, I, I don't share Christ as much as I need to, much as I should, much as he wants me to because I get worried about what people's going to say. I get worried about if they're going to laugh at me. I get worried if they're going to hit me, if they're going to say bad things to me or say, man, you're crazy. These are things that, as Christians, we shouldn't worry about. These are things that, as born-again believers, we just should say, you say what you got to say, I want to tell you that Jesus loves you, he died for your sins. When Jesus walked by and he told Simon, Peter, and Andrew to follow me, they followed him. No questions asked. When you go to a restaurant, you walk in the door and there's usually a sign that says, please wait to be seated. Then somebody comes up and says, will you follow me? What do we do? Yeah, I'll follow you. I'm going to go eat. How come we don't get that excited when Jesus says, follow me? How come we don't get that excited when he says, pray for this person? How come we don't get that excited when he says, love this person the way they need to be loved? How come we don't get that excited when he says, pray for your pastor? How come we don't get that excited when he says, Pray for your elders. How can we get excited when it says, pray for your friend. Pray for your mom. Pray for your dad. Pray for your granny. Pray for your grandpa. We're, we're like, oh, I don't want to do that. But when it's time to eat, we'll follow anybody. Well, I will. <laughs> I like to eat. And as Christians, we need to, to think of it like every time Jesus says, follow me, we're going to go eat. So we follow that person. We follow that person that says, follow me, I'll take you to your table so you can eat. We follow that person. Why don't we follow the one that gave us eternal life when he says, follow me? You know,
when I was young. It's been a while. When I was young, uh, I was thinking about this the other day. I, I remember my aunt and my uncle, they lived next door to us. And, and I didn't, I, w- I was probably four or five maybe. And, and I didn't know that, that my uh, uncle wasn't a Christian. Well, I don't know if he was or not. I know he didn't go to church. I know they didn't go to church. I went to church with mom and dad, and and and, and I just felt like back then, even I would come home and I would go visit them because I was their favorite. And I, I'm serious. This is how much of the favorite I was when I was in Head Start. They came and picked me up from Head Start one day. Wasn't supposed to. Took me home with them. And then when my dad came to get me, they hid me. I said, no, we, just, we didn't go get him. He's still there. <laughs> I finally had to come out because I had to go home. But I, I was their favorite. I, I'm, I'm actually named after my uncle. And, 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 and we, we, I'd come home from church and I can't remember, I would get some pillar they had, I think one of the couches they had, like a long round cushion, and well, I would stand it up, and I would just preach to him and pound that thing and tell him, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell, and all the boy, he would get mad at me. Why don't we have that kind of uh, energy today? Why don't we have that kind of grasp t- today on that? To tell others that if you are lost, if you are not saved, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are dying and going straight to hell. There's no side road. There's no, well, I'll take this road over here and, and, and maybe I won't make it there. No, it is, it's a straight road straight to hell. If you, don't, if you are not a Christian, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, best thing about that is that if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you have felt Him touch upon your heart and say what you're doing is wrong, you are living a sinful life, you need me. Follow me. When we come to terms and say, okay, Jesus, I know I'm lost. God, I know I'm lost. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross to be my sacrifice to pay for my sins. Thank you for taking away my sins. I accept your son as a free gift of eternal life. And then where do we go from there? If we was to die, then we go straight to heaven. Follow me. Like I said, when we go to a restaurant and a person goes to sit us, they say, follow me. We know they're taking us to a good place because we're going to eat. When Jesus says, follow me, we should know that we're going to a better place because he's leading us straight to heaven. When we go eat, we usually try to take friends, family. We like to to talk and laugh with people. And, And why don't we take friends and family to heaven with us? Why don't we invite them like that? And with all this other stuff I had written down, I thought, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this like this. And man, people's going to get tears in their eyes and they're going to cry. And they're going to say, oh, Jesus, help me. That's what I wanted to see. God says, no, you're going to say what I tell you to say. And when we do that, when we fully trust in him, and, and I'm, I need to do better at it. I need to be better at it. I need to, be, I need to follow him like I'm telling you guys. This is also to me. 
I've learned that when, when men of God speak, not only speak to the congregation, they speak to themselves because it's God talking. Follow me. That's what Jesus says. If you're lost today, if you're not sure, make that assurance. This could be your last chance. If you're saved today and you are not following him like you should, do it. Follow me. Make things right with God. If you feel like God is leading you to do something in the church, to teach, to, to volunteer, to help, listen to him. The blessings you will receive will be a lot better, be more than what you think you have. If you are not a member here and you feel like God is leading you here, go, do it, follow God. God's never been wrong. I'm wrong all the time, just about God has never been wrong. Every time God has asked us, Pam and I, to do something, and we've done it willingly, without any questions, it's always worked out. It's always gone the way it's supposed to. For example, before we moved to this area, and we, we had a month to get out of our, our place where we was at, and we looked, Pam got on, on the, her phone and looked at all these places and couldn't find anything. And we was down to the last week. Remember what, what did we do? Oh, let's pray about it. Instead of doing that from the beginning. So we prayed, God, whatever, wherever we need to be, we know you have a place for us. Show us where it's at. And then uh, our daughter sends Pam a picture. She said, here's this place, and it's in uh, the Keys area. So we go, and we look at it, and, and then we call the person, and we go, and we look at the place, and the landlord's there, and she says, well, there's all this paperwork you got to fill out, and, you know, we talk to her, and we got to do this, we need this, 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 and, and we were just talking and looking, and she says, well, I got a few more people to come and look at the place, but uh, if you guys want it, it's yours. So we <laughs> praise God for that, and we moved in like we got out of that other place we're supposed to be out of the very last day. And God provided. God provided people to help us move, church family to help us move, friends to help us move. And we was done a day and a half. That's how God works. When we follow him the way we're supposed to follow him. When we trust in him, he will do wonderful things in our lives. He will change your world. And he will help you change the world around you. Let's pray. Father, we, we come at this time and we thank you for your word, Father. And, and just the few words that you have spoke to Simon, Peter, and Andrew, follow, follow me. And Lord, that they laid everything down and, and followed you. Lord, I pray right now that you will help us as a church, as individuals, to heed your word, to follow you. And Lord, whatever capacity it is, if it's teaching, volunteering, helping, whatever it is you have set aside for us to do, Lord, help us to do those things and do them lovingly and according to your will. Father, we thank you that you are not a liar. We thank you that you are never wrong. We pray you continue to bless our church and help us to grow in your name, 
And it's in your son's name we pray.